Hello, Abiding Together podcast listeners. It is Michelle, and I'm here to talk about our sponsor for this week's podcast. It is our great friends at Ascension Press. And Father Josh Johnson and Father Mike Schmitz, who have both been on the podcast, about their new book, The Pocket Guide to the Sacrament of Reconciliation. This is a small but powerful book, and it is the perfect book. It is like the perfect size. I love the size that it is to bring with you for an examination of conscience for reconciliation. It is a great gift to give to confirmation children or people coming into the church, but it's a great gift for you to really enliven the sacrament and to really make it a beautiful routine in your spiritual life. And so you can get your copy at ascensionpress.com backslash reconciliation. And this book is available for pre-order and it is expected to start shipping in February. But for all of our Abiding Together podcast listeners, you get 15% off with the code ABIDE15. And again, that website is ascensionpress.com backslash reconciliation, and you get 15% off with ABIDE15. So give yourself the gift of this beautiful book, The Pocket Guide to the Sacrament of Reconciliation. Have a great week. Hello, and welcome to the Abiding Together podcast. Abiding Together is a place where you can find connection, rest, and encouragement on your journey with Jesus Christ. My name is Sister Miriam James Heidland, and every week I'm joined by two of my very dearest friends, Heather Kim and Michelle Benzinger. This podcast is born out of our friendship and all that the Lord is doing in our lives. You hear us laugh, you hear us cry, you hear us share very vulnerably, and you hear us talk about the things that we're still learning along the way, and you're most welcome to join us. You can find out all of our information on our podcast episodes on abidingtogetherpodcast.com. But for now, grab a cup of coffee, settle in, and welcome home. Hello, and welcome to this week's episode of the Abidings Together podcast. We are delighted to have Father Josh Johnson back with us again, and this episode is going to rock your heart and your life, so get ready. Okay, get ready. So he's going to speak to us very deeply about our hearts, and um, but before we dive in, Heather, Michelle, how are we doing? Are we? How, how's it going? We are good. We are really good. And so, mm -hmm. you know, Lent is Prepping upon us. Lent. Yeah, I know. Upon Prepping, us. thinking about what I'm going to give up, what grace mm -hmm. God might have in store. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, Lent is hard. You know, it's not like something you look forward to usually. Yeah. At the same time, like it's going to make space. That's the hope, right? It make is. Make space for the Lord. Yeah. Make space. I saw this graphic that I love from an artist that I love, and he said, don't waste the wilderness. And I just love that oh sentiment. Oh my gosh, that was awesome. Yeah. Yes. I was like, do not waste this wilderness. And it was interesting. My spiritual director said, because I, I feel like the Lord has been leading me into a desert. And um, mm -hmm. he said, you know, he is going to tempt your identity and what you do and how you relate to the Lord and your intimacy with the Lord. You know, he says to so be on the lookout mm -hmm. for that. And I think that's what we're really diving into in this next episode is where is, you know, the devil try to go after our, our identity and what we do that we want to do more for the Lord than be with the Lord. And then what hinders our relationship with him? Like what are the pitfalls? And so I'm really excited about this episode, just Father Josh's heart, yes. but prepping us for Lent. Like let's let's go in there. Let's mm -hmm. not waste this time with the Lord, you know, uh, Lent. Let's go all the way to Calvary and let's go all the way to the resurrection, people. Let's do this. Yeah, yeah. Mm, amen. Yeah. So Father, you were sharing with us um, just off off mic right before this about a, a story that really kind of changed how you personally encountered confession. And we just thought that would be an incredible just place to dive in um, for all of our listeners today. So do you want to share that with us and kind of unpack that for us? Yeah. So but, but before I can share, yeah, before I can share what's on my heart, uh, I'm ADD and Sister Miriam used the words like getting it ready. And when I was a kid, there was a song by DJ Jubilee called Get It Ready, Get It Ready, Get It Ready, Ready, Get It Ready, Get It Ready. <laughs> and then at one point I said, what's the name of your school, Lee? What's the name of your school? So it's like, what's the name of your order of salt? What's the name of your order of salt? Uh, anyway, so. <laughs> we'll take it, Father. We'll take there, it. There it is. Yeah, so. There it is. Oh, y'all, I was, um. Whoop, there it is. God's mercy. Uh oh, oh no, come back, come back. <laughs> the butterfly. Uh oh, -uh, that soul. You see that tissue? <laughs> You remember that, Sister Miriam? I could see you dancing whenever you were in college. I could oh, see it. We cannot it. confirm nor deny any rumors you I, may have heard, Father Josh Johnson. I'm I having, don't, I'm having I an don't image know. right now. I have the vision. It's a uh, whoa, it's happening. Oh, oh whatever. I, I have the I'm video. Only, <laughs> I'm, only, I'm only 27 years old, people. I'm too young for these things. So. <laughs> okay, so whenever I was uh, in seminary, 
I went to confession to Father Mark Toops, a good friend of our, all of ours. Mm-hmm. And it was one of the most powerful experiences in confession because after I confessed my sins, like normally you go to confession and you receive the penance and you do your penance, get absolution and you go. And it's all the, that's beautiful. And God's grace is operative even in the most simple, quick confessions ever. However, in this confession, Father Mark asked me a question that I'd never pondered before. I'd never thought about. He, he said to me, he said, okay, w- what happened before you sinned? Mm. He said, well, like, what, what preceded your sin? Like, what, what were you longing for? <laughs> and I was like, whoa, hold up. Wait, I'm sorry. I did not come in for conversation. Uh, <laughs> like, no, like, just give me a, a Hail Mary or two or three and, and let me go. And which, again, those are super powerful to get Hail Marys. It was powerful for me to, to stop and begin to, like, look at my, my day Look, examine my heart, and, and and think about like what happened that day. Like, what did I feel rejected? Did, did I have a conversation with somebody where, even if they didn't reject me, I perceived rejection, and because I perceived that rejection, um, I began to grasp now at a quick fix with sin. You know, right? Mm-hmm. I wanted to belong, right? So, like maybe before I gossiped, I have never addressed my abandonment issues and and I just want to be a part and so I'm going to participate in gossip because I don't want to be left out and so like that's what preceded was I did not want to be uh, left apart from the conversation even though I knew it wasn't a healthy conversation or a good conversation or whatever it might be or if it was a, a sin of lust it's like like what preceded right both on the in the interior of my heart where where am I longing for intimacy with God but also just like like what happened that day in 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 um you know, there's one of my kids whenever I was at LSU, good friend of mine, uh, still good friends, he um, he was in a, a frat. And when he joined his frat, he he did it because he wanted to be a disciple and he wanted to make disciples in that area. Like He was like, I feel called to the messiness of fraternity life and I want to disciple those guys in the midst of the frat life. And whenever he would go to like frat meetings, he was virtuous. Whenever he would go out to even bars with his brothers in the frat house, like he was virtuous. But anytime he went to a party at the frat house, he would always get drunk and he would always objectify women and just like just it was never good. And I remember he and I were talking about it one day and I said, well, like maybe like your your near occasion of sin is something about the trigger. Your mind is doing parties at the frat house, you know, and so maybe you could go to the frat house and disciple people there for meetings. Maybe you could hang out with guys tailgating, whatever. But when you go to that place, there's something that it triggers in your mind. And all of a sudden, you keep falling. And, and, and when he began to avoid parties at the frat house, he began to find find freedom. And so sometimes there is there's something on the just a deep level of the heart as to why we we mm-hmm. we do what we do. And sometimes it's because there's triggers. There are natural things that in our our psyche that are just going to precede us committing certain certain bad habits. Does that did you, have you had that experience? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Oh, every day. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Target dollar section. Just kidding, but uh, <laughs> but no, I think it is. I think there's something more that we have to dive into. I think like Saint Teresa of Avila often says, the self awareness is the beginning of holiness. Like mm-hmm. to really learn ourselves, that we have to be students of ourselves, and we learn ourselves by coming closer to God, and God shows us how He created us and how He made us. And a lot of times, our greatest sins come from our greatest woundedness. I mean, almost mm-hmm. all the time, mm-hmm. you know. And so asking that a question, like that question that Father Mark Toops asked you, like wow. Wow, mind blown. Like, okay, that's totally different. How I like what preceded the sin? Like, that's something I'm going to start asking myself. Like, what preceded mm-hmm. the sin? And then asking, what is the real longing and desire in my heart? I think that part of that question is huge for you. Like, you wanted to feel like you belonged. So that was gossip. You wanted to feel this. So that, so you get to mm-hmm. that that desire that is good, like, but we have distorted it. Communion is good. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, but we have distorted mm-hmm. it in some way, shape, or form. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's beautiful. Yeah, even in the in the, in the um in the the uh, what's the prayer we do uh, the act of contrition we say like and I will avoid the near occasion of sin um, and and how many of us actually like leave the confession and are like what is the near occasion like not, not what's my sin I know what my vice is I know what my my bad habit is but what's the near occasion like what precedes that is like the the thing that the Lord I think is inviting all of us to begin to ponder I think Sister Miriam you're about to say something. Uh, what I was going to say is this is the re- this is where the, where the real work takes mm-hmm. place, mm-hmm. and I think these are the tremendously vulnerable places. I really believe that, and I know in my own journey, asking these questions now for so long, those are the tender places of of okay, so yeah, I gossiped or yeah, I did this, I grasped at this or that, 
and, and and then then to say, well, here, Father, here's the real story. See, I was feeling really lonely. Like the, these are the oh, these are like the tender. Those are like the vulnerable places. And you know, Bob Shoots often will say, there's a great saying that he talks about when we give priest retreats, and he says, behind every disordered, I think he said it with us when he was on our podcast. But he said, behind every disordered desire, behind every disordered desire, and all of us have disordered desires. We all do. But he said, behind every disordered desire is a good and holy desire, an unmet need, and an unconf- a wound in an unconfessed pattern mm-hmm. of sin, right? So behind every disordered desire is a good and holy desire, an unmet, unmet need, a wound, and an, an unconfessed pattern of sin. So you can see the, the, the birth of what happens at the root of that tree because nothing ever comes out of nowhere. I guarantee you, nobody ever just gets angry and cusses somebody out out of nowhere. Like that, that's got a story to it, you know? So it, it, it's a matter of sin management versus allowing Jesus, the gardener to come Mm. to the root of our tree and bring some manure up in there and till the soil. And that is that my friends, that's the real work. I mean, I, as I say it to you, I'm saying it to myself. I'm like, yeah, this is, this is really where the real Mm -hmm. work is. And it's even, it's going deeper than the surface, right? So like on the surface, I could say Mm -hmm. like what preceded my sin was I was really tired. And when I'm really tired, Mm -hmm. I'm just not in the best place to whatever, but that's, that's surface. That's the surface excuse right there. Mm -hmm. I was tired. Why am I tired is the next question. Well, I'm tired because I've said yes to every invitation I've received from people. Okay. Why did I say yes to every invitation that I've received from people? Well, I said yes, because I'm scared that they're going to reject me. Mm -hmm. If I say no, I'm scared Mm -hmm. that. If I say uh, yep. I can't, then I'm going to miss out and I'm never going to, um, I can't trust that God's going to, uh, uh, he's going to supply the grace that I need. He's going to fulfill me in all these other areas. And and so, so that's the deeper things. I don't trust that Jesus Christ is sufficient. Like the deeper issue here is I don't believe God's enough for me. Um, and so I, I'm, I'm, I'm saying yes to everything. So that's like where the Lord's trying to take us. And so that when we go to confession, he's like, mm-hmm. all right, so like we start with the sin. And then we go beneath the sin to the surface, and then we go uh, down. We start digging, and we're like, oh, shoot. Like, the real issue here is is I don't trust my father. Mm. Or, or, or the, and, 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 yeah. and then it's like, and then that's where the healing begins to, I mean, again, the grace is, is, the grace is so good. But, like, there's, like, always a deeper healing that the Lord's trying to invite us to experience, and boom. You know, so, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think for many of us. I've experienced this so many times. I think many people listening are like, I don't want to go down that rabbit hole. Like that's scary. It's scary to go down the rabbit hole because you do, you might not know what you're going to find. And I think that's where we need to call to mind the truth of who God is, that he is a healer, you know, mm-hmm. that he has the power to heal and to save. Like those places, if we go in on our own, we don't know what to do. We don't know how to fix it. It's just filled with pain mm-hmm. and shame and mess and yuck. And it's like, I don't want to go there. But if I hold the hands of Jesus and I go there with him, that's totally different because on my own power, nothing. I got nothing. But with Jesus there, you know, he has the power to heal and to save and restore things that we, we, we can't even fathom could be restored. That's what he does. That's what he's all about. That's what the crucifixion and the resurrection shows us. Like if he just was crucified, well, I mean, we're all lost, but he he rose, you know, (laughs) that's the point. So he can make all things new. And I think being willing to expose ourselves to the one who is love and the one who can save us and desires to save us is so important. I remember going to confession one time to Father Dan Petit when I was at Steubenville. And I was like the queen of like, I don't want to be totally exposed. So I'm just going to put everything under the umbrella of like, yeah, I struggled with impurity or whatever it might be. Mm-hmm. And, and I remember him one day we were walking for confession and he just said, tell me more about that. Mm. And he just said, was it this or this? Was it this? or th-? And he got very specific and I was like mortified, you know, but I realized like it was so tender and loving the way that he did it. Like, like what you said, Michelle, in the last episode, it wasn't exposing to shame me. Mm-hmm. It was like uncovering me to the light of God. It's like, if I cover myself up, I'm not going to be hit by the healing light of God in those places that so desperately needed it. Mm-hmm. But we have a priest here and he, when you get to, if he has time, if you go to confession, you can do it in like the little adoration chapel to the side. And so he makes you look at the uh, monstrance while you confess <laughs> and him. And he's such a gentle, loving priest. But it is like when I do it that way, I see the gaze of love in the monstrance. But I also see like the heart breaking also. And it just brings a deeper yeah. contrition into my heart, you know, because I realized mm-hmm. after I confessed something last time and I saw like I was about to 
I, I paused and stopped myself when I was about to fall into the same sin. But then all of a sudden my mind went back to the monstrance and my mind went back to the Eucharist mm-hmm. and Jesus, I'm like, no. And I was able to turn myself around because I remember, oh, I have to get back in the gaze. I have to get, mm-hmm. and oh, yeah. I don't want to hurt his heart. Okay, stop, like pay attention, you know, to what's going on, be aware. But I think that it's what you were saying, Father Josh, like you go deeper, you ask yourself the deeper questions. Like why did, I'm not, it's not that I'm just tired. It's because I did this. It's because I did this. Mm-hmm. And yeah. that takes time, you know, and takes mm-hmm. attention. And I think one of the things, so one of the things that I, I do whenever I walk with people, especially whenever they haven't been to confession in years and, and they are believing a lot of lies from the devil because of what has happened to them in their life and what they've done, um, whether it's, you know, abortions or adultery, I'm in affairs, Whatever it might be, like whatever, uh, whether it's, it's, it's these these fantasies that they're just so ashamed of that they have. They're like, I wish I didn't have these fantasies and I'm so ashamed because I, like, I've been in church all these years and I've been doing ministry all these years and I still like have this, this, this fantasy life that I am attracted to whatever it might be. One thing I, I always do whenever, especially when I have time, especially, like, and I, I, I encourage people, like, make an appointment too. And we can do it behind the screen still. Like, you don't have to be face to face, but... If the way we can have time is, is I, I invite them. There, there's that video that Michelle's husband, Chris, shared with me years ago. And it's the come and get your, wait, come and get your love. Yeah. That, uh, where there's a father and he's like dancing over his son when his son's a baby. And he's delighting his son when his son's three. And then he does it again when his son's like 12 and 16. And he's, his son mm-hmm. at this point doesn't want to receive the father's love. But the father's still delighting and still loving him. And then again, when the son's finally older, the son has received that so much that he's now able to share that back to the father. Um, but I always in, in, invite people to watch that video before the confession begins. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I tell them, I say, like, this is how the father's delighting in you whenever you were baptized. This is the Father's delight when you received your first communion. This is the Father's delight when you committed your first mortal sin. Mm. Whenever whenever you were at that abortion clinic, the Father was still looking upon you with love. Like, his, his delight doesn't change. And he was calling you. He was calling you to receive his love and mercy through your repentance in the confessional. And so, because sometimes, again, we get so caught up then in, in, that, in that shame, in the lies. It's like, let's always focus on the Father's face. Let's fo- focus on the Father's delight. Like, he is loving me. Um, and he is calling me to this intimacy and he wants me to be free and he wants me to be restored. But it, it's, it's, I think it's super important with, that priest did with you, Michelle, is like, look at the Lord, look at the Lord's face and, and then begin your confession from there. That way you're not, you're not confessing out of a place of, uh, of shame. You're confessing out of a place of mm-hmm. relationship of my father loves me and he wants me to receive more love. And so I'm going to, to bring this to him. I'm going to give this over to him so I could receive the blood of Christ, inebriate my soul. Mm-hmm. Mm. I think, Father, especially what you're saying here and what both you, Heather and Michelle, have said is it's the the differentiation between who I am as a beloved versus my the sins that I commit. And I think so often we get those two conflated. We don't know who God is and we don't know who we are either. And we take on our identity as our sin. Like I am my sin or I am my addiction or I am my struggle or I am my... And we're not. Those are things that we experience and they're telling us something very valuable about where our hearts are broken. Whereas one priest said, you know, when we sin, we forget we belong. Mm. It's it's the all the places I've forgotten that I belong mm. and that I don't want to suffer or that I want to medicate or... Those are the those are like the, the revelatory places of where my heart has been broken. And so where Jesus is coming into these places to remind me the truth of who I am and to heal in the deepest places to bring us, it's all about Holy communion. It's all about Holy communion. So I wonder father, I I know that you were going to lead us through a meditation and our listeners love that. And so I was wondering though, if you could just tell us a bit about your book, about some practical tools for your book, and then maybe kind of just lead us through all through a meditation so we can help prepare our hearts. Mm, It's beautiful. That'd be great. Thank you so much. Yes. So the book father Mike Schmitz and I co-authored is called pocket guide to the sacrament of reconciliation. And essentially uh, through the book, we first win you over to understand why confession, you know, where's that in scriptures and in the history of our church, the tradition of our church. Uh, We then also, so help you to understand sin, uh, why we why we commit sins, uh, why we struggle with that, to examine our conscience, to discern what's our dominant faults, our dominant vices, and what are the virtues that we could cultivate to oppose those vices. Um, and then we give you a lot of practical tools on um, how to be intentional and consistent in your relationship with Christ in the sacrament of reconciliation by coming up with a rule of life with regards to when you're going to receive God's uh, love and his mercy in the confessional. And so it's a very practical book, um, and it'll be a helpful guide to people who are either struggling with confession or they want to go deeper in confession, and they want to have a good experience of receiving God's love and mercy, which is what God desires, is just to love us and to give us his mercy on earth so we can be with him in heaven. Mm, I love that. Mm. I love that. 
Yeah, that's mm-hmm. so good. And I love all the practicals that mm-hmm. it has in it. I think that is something Super that we yep. need. You know, we need these tools mm-hmm. to be able to approach the sacraments because sacraments, I love them. I always call them, you know, like kisses from heaven because they're tangible grace. They're grace, like that is part of the beauty of our Catholic church is that we have these sacraments and I really call them their tangible grace. They're tangible kisses from heaven to draw us closer into communion with the Lord. And that I love that you give a lot of practicals in this book to be able to approach the sacraments, even both older, like even like, okay, Lord, I'm ready. Give me all the grace you got. Cause I'm ready mm-hmm. to receive. Like it, it helps us prepare our hands wide open to release what needs to be released. Like you said earlier, so we can receive all that he has for us. You know, there's so many graces that he has for us that we don't take advantage of. And so it's such a great mm-hmm. tool. Yeah. So thank you, Father Josh. Thank y'all. Shall we pray? Well, let's pray. Yes. Let's do mm-hmm. that. In the name of the father and of the son and of the Holy spirit. Amen. I just want to invite us right now to um, <laughs> to go to the, the foot of the cross. This is the, the Lenten season, and um, Jesus, the Word of God tells us, was resolutely determined to journey toward Jerusalem, to the cross, where our, our healing begins. So I just want to invite us to go to the foot of the cross with John, the beloved disciple, with Mary. And I want to invite us to to look at Jesus, to look at Jesus Christ, who is totally vulnerable with us right now. He's uncovered and he's looking at at us. Hmm. There's a lot going on right now. There are people who are cursing at Jesus and there are people who are mocking Jesus and there are people who are screaming at Jesus and it's very loud and it's very messy and there's just so much going on right now but Jesus in the midst of all that is happening right now he's looking he's looking at you his eyes are only on you and your eyes are invited to be only on him because we are looking at him as he looks at us with love, with unconditional love. We are able to now listen to him. We're not focusing on the distractions anymore. We're not focusing on the stuff. We're not focusing on the circumstances that we find ourselves in. We're just focused on his eyes. And Because we're looking at him, we can listen to him. Jesus wants to speak to you, to me, right now. This Lent, Jesus, I want, I I, I want, I desire this Lent to be a Lent of deeper freedom, God. I desire for this to be a Lent where I, I grow in my relationship with you in ways that I never thought were imaginable before. And so, Jesus, I want to go to confession this Lent. I want to go to confession and I want to confess. I want to confess things that maybe I've I've never really been able to to share before because I was scared of being rejected. I was scared that, um, I don't know, I I was just scared, God. And so I want to confess what you want me to confess. So Jesus, I'm looking at you right now. And I invite you and your love to see me, to see all of me, Jesus. To see everything that I've done. To see everything that's been done to me and the effects that that has had on my life. Jesus, as you are stripped on the cross, I am now stripped. You can see me, God. What do you want me to bring to the light? What do you desire for me to share with your priest in the sacrament of reconciliation, Jesus? Jesus, as I, as I hear you speak to me right now, certain, certain things are coming to my heart. I'm, I'm, I'm going to show them to you. Jesus, how do you see me? Like right now, I'm not, I, I'm not in confession yet. I'm preparing my heart for confession. But how do you see me right now, now that you've brought up these, these, these sins that you want me to bring to you in your, in your, in your throne of mercy in the confession? Or how do you see me, God, right now? Not how are you going to see me after I go to confession, but God, like right now, as I'm holding up these same struggles, these same vices, 
these sins that have been in my life and a part of my life for so long, how do you see me, God? You love me. You delight in me. You want to be with me. God, I want to be with you too. <laughs> so bad. You're the one I was looking for the whole time, God. You're the one I was longing for the whole time, Jesus. And I thank you for thirsting for me. I thank you for wanting me, knowing that I was going to mess up. I thank you so much, God. And now that I know and I can see in your face and I can hear in your voice and the silence of my heart how much you love me, right now, before confession, I'm going to bring these to you in the sacrament. And I invite you, God, I invite you to take me wherever you want to take me to heal and to renew and to restore our relationship. Because nothing else matters. Nothing but you. Nothing but you, God, and me, and me, and you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. 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 Oh, thank you, that's Father That's beautiful, Josh. Father. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think there's going to be a lot of people that are just going to want to sit with that for a while. <laughs> and mm -hmm. I'm sure there are many people that haven't had an opportunity to sit with the Lord like that. So I just want to say thank you. It's profoundly beautiful. Yeah. Profoundly. Mm -hmm. And maybe you're listening right now and you're in your car or you were somewhere else. And I just want to encourage you to come back with this. You know, the, to find a quiet place mm -hmm. and to, to really engage in that prayer is really beautiful. Yeah. I was just going to ask you, Father, where can we purchase your book? Where can our listeners find your book and any other resources that you could recommend? Yeah, so the Packet Guide to the Sacrament of Reconciliation is available at ascensionpress.com and on amazon.com as well. So you can get it online. It'll be available, uh, I think, in February. Okay, we'll post the links in our show notes um, to our listeners. So, so we'll go, it's hard to switch to one things after that. And so, but, um, on that time, but for our one things, actually, I have a quote from St. Catherine of Siena that goes along beautifully with the reflection that we just did. Uh, been taking a class from Father Paul Murray. Is that how I say his name? Sister Moreau Murray. Murray. Um, yeah, on prayer and uh, beauty. And he has, had this beautiful line in our this class on prayer and humility, like humbling ourselves before the Lord and knowing that we need him in our weakness. And he says, God has been fully aware of the many mistakes we would make in the future and of our countless fallings away from grace. The gaze, his gaze has never left us for a moment. St. Catherine of Siena, profoundly moved by this fact, made this beautiful prayer I just read this prayer from St. Catherine of Siena, and it just wrecked me the other day. And I've just been meditating it on, so I'll post it in our show notes. And it says, O oh, infallible love, although in your light you saw all the evils that your creature would commit against your infinite goodness, you acted as if you did not see. Rather, you kept your eye on the beauty of your creature with whom you fell in love, as if you were crazy and drunk with love. And through love, you drew her out of yourself and gave her being. And I just love that beautiful image that he is just drunk in love with us and that he does not look at our sins, but he looks at the beauty of mm. his created creature. Mm. So I will post that in my show notes. And our show notes, they're not just mine, there are show notes. And so, Sister Miriam, what is your one thing? Well, I just have to say, I, I once again, my one thing is just the priesthood. Father, thank you so much. It's just been a, an absolute delight to spend time with you. And, you know, I really believe that if men stopped saying yes, our world would cease to exist as we mm. know it. So thank you for not just your yes on the day of your ordination, but your yes every day since you, your love changes the world. And it's just a, a, a true delight to be with you. So mm -hmm. that is my one thing for the week. Yeah. Miss Heather? 
Um, my one thing is a series I just started watching. I think it's been out for a little while, but it's by Father Dave Pavanka, and it's the Metanoia series. I know many of you mm. may have heard of his um, Wild Goose series on the Holy Spirit, but this one is called the Metanoia series, and you can you know offer a donation to watch it, or you can watch it for free. I'm going to put the link to it in our show notes, but I just thought it's another beautiful resource during Lent if you want to watch it with a group or you know online with people mm. or within your family. He's so good and it's so beautifully done. I was really moved. Like I was in tears the other night just watching mm. the beauty of it and, and what it was stirring up. So yeah, you can check that out. Father Josh, what's your one thing? Well, since Michelle only gave one, I'll give two. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so one is another Maverick City song called um, You're Welcome in This Place. Uh, and mm. again, that's just another good song to, to pray with, uh, inviting the, the Lord into those places in our hearts uh, where we struggle and where we are longing for love. And um, so you're welcome in this place is one. And then the other song is by Will Reagan. And I think this is a good song to to listen to before we go to the sacrament of reconciliation. It's called Through and Through. And it's very simple. He just says, mm -hmm. you see me and you know me and you love me through and through. Mm. And if we could uh, be in that place, in that space, as we go to God's mercy throne in the confessional, uh, then I think that that could help us to confess our sins well and to to receive all the love that he has in store for us in our walk toward eternity. Mm. Wow. Mm. And I love you and too, I, Sister Miriam. <laughs> uh. I was about to say, okay, next week Lent is upon us, my people. So we are entering into the desert in these 40 days. We will be doing our book study, uh, This Present Paradise by Claire Dwyer. All the information is on our podcast website and we are going to journey into the heart of the trinity with elizabeth saint elizabeth of the trinity and mm -hmm. dwell in that okay father josh has to say something else one you last see thing him. if you could just do, do me a favor some vocation director as well as pastor not holy rosary uh for the diocese of baton rouge and i perceive the holy spirit for this on my heart so i'm just inviting people to fast for lent to please fast for healthy and holy vocations uh, to the priesthood and religious life for the Diocese of Baton Rouge, for everybody, but like specifically for the Diocese of Baton Rouge. And so I'm just inviting people to fast, fast for, <laughs> for this every day. If one person, if, if your parishes can make a sign-up sheet uh, for my for this intention of my heart and just uh, for every day for Lent, have one person fast the whole day um, on bread and water, on the two, two small meals, one main meal, no snacks between, and then pray a rosary. Um, as well for the people who are fasting so that they can persevere in this intention for healthy, holy vocations. And I, I put together a little ebook as well. Of course you did. It's of course you did. In your spare time. <laughs> it's, free. It's, it's a free ebook. It's free. You can download it. And it's at www.diobr.org slash vocations. Uh, you can get the ebook. And I wrote a reflection every day of different saints who are priests or religious to kind of inspire people by their stories. But the goal is to get people to fast and to pray because I really believe that, especially with COVID and the pandemic, I'm like, I've not been able to go out and travel as much to promote vocations. And I, I perceive the Lord was like, Josh, don't do that. Like, just get people to pray and fast and watch mm. watch me do the fruit in your land. And so if y'all can all join me in this, for my land this year, your land next year, like, just do it for me, uh, please. Because uh, I want to I wanna <laughs> see the fruit of praying and fasting for Baton Rouge Diocese. Thank you. Father Josh, thank you for being on the show with us again. Yes, and we love you. Yeah, we can't wait. We just want to encourage our listeners to 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 get your book and and to really make. We just want to encourage everyone uh, to really make a good confession this Lent, whether it's been a long time for you or whether you go all the time. Love always grows, and love is always blooming, and there's always new places of our heart where Jesus would love to bring us into communion. So there's nothing like it. There's nothing else on earth like it than a good sacramental confession that has the power to heal and to raise us from the dead and to unite us with the one who's loved us from all eternity. So that's what we want to offer to you. So happy Lent, y'all. Happy Lent. And until next week, uh, we will be abiding together. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. Thank you so much for listening to this week's episode. If you liked it, would you please share it with a friend? We encourage you to head over to our website, abidingtogetherpodcast.com where you can find all the show notes, links to our one thing, transcripts, group discussion questions for each episode, and beautiful mugs, t-shirts, journals, and prints in our shop. There you can also subscribe to receive our weekly email with links to each new episode and all of its content. We'd love to connect on social media and invite you to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter so you can catch inspiring reflections every day. You're also welcome to join our private Facebook group and dive deeper into discussions with our fellow listeners. If the podcast has blessed you, would you prayerfully consider financially supporting us? 
The Abiding Together podcast is only available due to the generous support of our listeners. There are significant costs associated with creating this content, such as tech support, design, website, equipment, and hired staff that we need to be able to continue offering great content to you. Abiding Together is a nonprofit 501c3, and all donations are tax deductible. You can make donations of any amount through a website called Patreon, or you can send us a check directly if that's easier. If you donate $15 or more per month on our Patreon page, you become a tribe member and you will receive monthly individual videos from Michelle, Heather, and I, as well as other exclusive content, recipes, playlists, downloadable prints, and more. You can find all the information about Patreon at patreon.com forward slash abiding together. Thank you and God bless you.